What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. I got to give you guys my review of the Johnny Tapia documentary, Mi Vida Loca. It came on HBO tonight, and I really thoroughly enjoyed it. First of all, I liked a good, well made documentary, and on top of that, I like boxing, so it was a win win situation. It was well put together. It was executive produced by Lou Diabella and also 50 Cent SMS Promotions. And I liked it, man. I think these boxers have the toughest, some of the toughest stories that you can even think of. There's tons of boxers where you can really make a movie about their life. They've just been through that much. And Johnny Tapia, without a doubt, is no exception to this rule. Johnny Tapia, his life is, is definitely harsh. And the thing you got to respect about Tapia is he's so candid. He's, he's like, he can't lie or something. He just tells it like it is. And he's he's kind of narrating this. They also had Lee of Schreiber, who does the 24-7, doing narration in this. So I like that aspect because I like Lee of Schreiber. I think he has the perfect narrator voice. Um, again, Johnny Tapia, his life was just rough. From a young age, his mom was killed. She was stabbed over 20 times. Um, they said his father was dead. His father wasn't around when he was a child. And... They talk about him just growing up. And me, here's an ego fact. I was actually born in New Mexico. And that's where Johnny Tapia is from. So, I don't know. I just, it, I, I feel, because he was, he put on for the Albuquerque crowd and the, the New Mexican fans. And I almost forgot how much of a showman he was. Like, he really was passionate. And you could tell that boxing was his outlet. Aside from all the demons he was facing, the drugs and... You know what I mean? Street shit he was into. He was uh, involved with some gangs. You know what I mean? Just kicking it with the wrong element, the wrong crowd. But he was really passionate in that ring. And that was like his outlet to get rid of or sweep under the rug all the bullshit, all the, you know what I mean? The things he was around at the time. And it showed he was he was really passionate. He was a showman. He was doing backflips and um, he was talking shit in the ring and I don't know. It's just good stuff, man. He He's a man's man type of fighter. Like, he threw combinations. He was willing to take a punch. He was, he was just a warrior. There's nothing else you could really say. So I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it's good also to see just the vintage stuff. i seen some vintage throwback uh, footage of Bob Arum was in it. Freddie Roach trained Johnny Tapia at a point. So they had some old school Freddie Roach in there. They had some the young Max Kellerman. And it's just good to see, like, this archive footage of people we, we know and talk about today. Um, I'm trying to make sure I cover all the bases without any spoilers. It's just, I don't know, I liked it. It, it was paced well. It It's definitely an emotional one if you, you know what I'm saying, if you have a heart, you, you just have to feel sorry for him. Like I said, he's very candid and open, talking about his drug abuse, the man has been in several comas, he's been pronounced dead multiple times, just rough stuff, you know what I mean, like, that's, that's not average, and, um, he had long stints where he was that without boxing, he got banned for three years, then he had to keep whipping himself back into shape, then after some consecutive wins, he was able to fight in his hometown for a title defense, it, it was just really well put together, and I thoroughly enjoyed it, like I said, it's not long, it's about an hour long, um, the pacing was good, good score. I like Leo Schreiber doing the narration. One of the fights he was fighting, they were both from New Mexico. And one was like the up and comer goody two shoe, if you will. And he was like the older one stints with jail and, and being arrested and stuff like that. So there's a big battle in Albuquerque in New Mexico about who is the representative of that region. And they show the fight. And one thing I didn't know is I guess there was a big gang presence because Albuquerque has a lot of gangs, but there was a big gang presence. So they had tons of cops and everyone had to go through metal detectors. And it was it was they had like a gang branch of the, the police involved because it was that type. They didn't want anything to, to pop off. So it, it just lets you know how real it was back in the day, like that they had this event and it was on super secure lockdown to make sure nothing happened that's how intense this rivalry was it took it was a year like years it had been brewing the rivalry 
So it was good to see just all the archive footage. I just really enjoyed it. There's one part they didn't talk about in the movie that I thought I was surprised that they left it out. But Tapia, he came back from one of his uh, rehabs or whatever, and he got knocked out in his career. So I was surprised they didn't incorporate that aspect into it. I forgot his opponent. The opponent had fought um, Robert Garcia. He got stopped by, what's the name, Robert Guerrero. He fought Brandon Rios later on also. And he was like a journeyman, so it was a, it was a big upset. Like the dude had been knocked out several times before Johnny Tapia faced him. And that's another thing that's a trip to me because... It's like you see these these tortured soul type boxers like the Mike Tysons who, you know, what I mean, abuse coke and do different things and live in the fast lane and then miss some of their career being in jail. Tapia did it. Tyson did it where, you know, what I mean, the rape case, just different things like that where they're gone for long stints and you see what they could do in the ring. So it's just it's like I always wish and I always wonder what would happen if I got to see johnny tapia clear-headed um with a beautiful life and you know what i mean had he not let his demons take over you know what i mean or mike tyson had he not went to jail what would he be like these are always things that intrigue me when i see fighters with with this um this type of uh, behavior outside of the ring and just i wonder what a focused a fully focused clean sober version of that fighter is capable of because we see what they're what they're doing and what they're doing not even really like abusing their body too you know what i'm saying they're like doing drugs on the low on the side in between fights and partying and you know what i mean just living that hectic crazy life so i wonder what a disciplined version of these fighters would be like what would johnny tapia what would his career have been like would he have lost to barrera or would he been able to beat him if he had continually fought without any drug abuse and stuff like that. Let me know what you guys think if you did watch it. Johnny Tapia, hell of a fighter, unfortunate. Rest in peace. Um, a very sad story. The another, uh, I don't want to give away too much, so I'll just drop it at that. But there's a there's a couple parts that are that are pretty shocking. The the part I'll give you guys a hint what I'm talking about. The part where they talk about him being in a coma and what happened. Another catastrophe happened on top of him being on a coma, in a coma. So um, if you watch it, let me know what you guys think. If not, I highly recommend it. It gets the ego two thumbs up. Drop me a comment if you did watch it. Let me know what you guys think. What do you think of Johnny Tapia? Rest in peace. God bless his soul. Make sure you like my video. As always, hate, comment, or subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.